thank you thank you nasser uh, much i um, i'm honored to be uh, joining this um, very informative uh, forum on uh, the uh, role of international humanitarian law in kashmir so let me let me just begin by going back to the point you made um, a very important point i must say where you mentioned that kashmir should not be viewed from the prism of human rights only uh, but it should be rather it should be looked from the prism of international humanitarian law or the law of armed conflict now that's a very important statement because um, international humanitarian law uh, is in in my view it is a subset of international law which applies in all situations irrespective of it's an armed conflict but what we are facing in kashmir is nothing short of an armed conflict that is going on for the past 72 years and the only uh, uh, sort of normative uh, discussion that you know uh, people are trying to figure an answer to is whether it's an international conflict or it's a non international conflict now uh, now the reason why i want to talk about whether this is an international or a non international conflict is because that would have a bearing on what rules of international humanitarian law or the law of armed conflict would apply to this situation now the the the, the requirement for a international armed conflict is when two two countries are engaged in a conflict um, there is an argument that at the moment this is not an international conflict by virtue of the fact that there is no direct evidence that links any kind of activity happening in kashmir to pakistan so therefore this is a non international armed conflict in the sense that it is between a high contracting party which is india which is engaged in an occupation and which is engaged in a conflict with the with the the parties situated in kashmir so now india is not a party to the additional protocol number 2 uh india is however in my view still bound by what we call the common article 3 to the 4 geneva conventions which sets out the minimum standards that are applicable to the parties engaged in armed conflict uh in my view and again i'm pretty sure um, all the panelists here would agree with this that india has been in major and grave breach of many provisions of the geneva conventions which do amount to a war crime if we do look at the situation as being a situation of armed conflict now this in international humanitarian law as you know gives rise to a prosecution which happens through different tribunals as mr uh, as justice ali nawaz johan was uh, a judge of the icit uh, was in the icty similarly now we have the international criminal court which prosecutes those crimes uh, unfortunately neither india nor pakistan are a party to the international criminal court and india would obviously stay away from any such court which would have jurisdiction over the crimes committed within the territory of uh, india now the the i think one of the most important things that we need to figure out is where can we take this you know from this point we all will eventually agree that india has been in violation of international humanitarian law and we can list out a number of situations where india has committed grave breaches of the geneva conventions but the ultimate question would be where do we go from here what is it that we can do can we help the the oppressed in kashmir who have been suffering this for the past 72 years in the form of indiscriminate attacks in the form of search and cordon operations as you mentioned rapes killings you know um uh, unlawful detentions you know it's it's like the entire geneva convention was made for india you know if you look at geneva convention number 4 frankly i mean you know majority of the you know the the laws are applicable in kashmir um, you know as a violation by india so we really need to figure out where do we take it from here we can list out all the violations we can discuss them at length maybe even uh, infinitely but we need to decide on where we go from here so based on the input that i will be receiving you know from this uh, learned panel then we can perhaps have a discussion on that also as we move on from here